Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Best Damn Sports Show in Franklin County for Wednesday, September 12th, 2018. I am the host, the Nighthawk, along with our studio director, Zach, and on the panel, our usual summer squad here. On my immediate right, the Red Man, Mr. Nick Mumley, and on my far right, the Duke. And of course, uh, Duke and I always tend to talk about weather, and it's certainly a little bit more serious this evening than us talking about getting a couple inches of rain in Vermont. I know you have lived in North Carolina for some time, and I know, Nick, you were down Carolina house hunting Recent visitor. Uh, right. earlier this summer. Yep. Uh, and I know you've spent a fair amount of time on the Weather Channel. Um, I really, at this point, haven't followed that closely, and I probably will once it strikes land. But you were telling me right before the show that this is the real deal here. Yeah, it definitely seems like it. And it's scary because, you know, um, like I was just down there a couple months ago, and, um, you know, it's just I got friends and family down there, and you worry about them, and just it's you, you don't want to see that, you know, happen to anybody but no, it's, we're not just talking about coastal i mean you know right. the, the rain i mean yeah. the scariest thing the coast is going to get killed i hope the outer banks i hope i, I see them again in my lifetime mm -hmm. talking what a nine to 13 foot storm surge i mean the outer banks basically it's beach you know back yeah. from the beach you have houses on some flat land we're talking a storm surge which will literally just go right over every you know right. everything yeah dude with a storm of that magnitude how much Soil erosion on beaches. No, that's In fact, I saw Jim Cantori. Easy to think of you, Nick. Linden State. Uh, Linden yep. State graduate. Yep. He, I saw him at Wrightsville Beach, which is the ocean beach. Yep. I know Wrightsville Beach well. Yep. It's the closest ocean beach to Wilmington, where right. the hurricane appears to be heading heading towards. But he did a, a great feature this morning on Wrightsville Beach, walking back from the beach, where there's some dunes and stuff. You know, nice kind of walkways with some gross grass and stuff. And then the hotels back, maybe a couple hundred feet. And he's just as he's walking and saying, the surge will be, you know, right up to me here, washing all the sand. Yeah. All that sand will go back right up against the, the line of hotels and stuff. Right. And then it'll start washing the other way. So, yeah. uh, so these so. dunes will be gone. Right. And then, no. and then, right. And he made the point: the dunes a little protection, but they'll be overwhelmed by yeah, if the storm surge is as big as it's. The danger of and then on the next high sure, tide, yeah. the dunes are gone. So the next high tide just kind of rolls in right. with no dunes okay. blocking them at all. And the danger of making myself look stupid, which probably most people are already know that. But my question to you is: once dunes are gone, do they re? Yeah, over, lack better word is it like by wind? Yeah, over, is, it, is that how a dune gets formed? Yeah, over over time. Yeah. Although obviously, uh, um, what they'll do is you know after the storm you know goes away and stuff, they'll just put, you know where there are big places of sand and stuff, they'll probably manually I'll just kind of like on the Outer Banks Highway 12, which I mentioned off the air, North Carolina Route 12, one of the most famous highways in the country because it gets you know flooded by ocean water so frequently. Um, and what they do there is, I mean, there are dunes all along it. It's mostly Cape Hatteras National Seashore. Yeah. The dunes kind of get wiped out, so you see just the, you know, the diggers, the front-end loaders come in and just okay. kind of build the, manually kind of build the dunes back. You remember, not to make a comparison, but the Alberg Sand Dunes, no, a.k.a. Palmer Beach, yeah. they yeah. used to have Palmer really nice dunes there, but yeah. remember 20, 2011, the record flooding right. of Lake Champlain. It took all the dunes of, yeah. right out. I think out. they've come yeah. back. Now you have a fence here keeping people off there. I think in Time Hawk, yeah, hopefully, yeah. you know, nature brings them back a little yeah. bit, but um, um, as far as nature goes, there's very few things prettier to me than sand dunes. Yeah, I, I, I right. just, you know, yeah. when you're like at Cape Cod, you're just sitting on the beach and right behind you is all those unbelievably great sand dunes. Yeah. And, wispy grass blowing in the breeze yeah, hey, I hear you. and all that so anyways um, anyway. and last question when is it reportedly ready to Nick hit Nick might land? be ahead of me I, I had a busy it sounds like late either, Thursday into, fr into Friday yeah it looks like fr Friday morning is going to be morning. landfall okay. so it, it had gone down a little the one advisory I saw I just was home for about 10 minutes it was down a little bit category 3 down from a category 4 
125. It was down a little bit, yeah. yeah. But still, but we're still, talking. Yeah. And, and just the inland flooding. That that's right. going to be the biggest. Yeah, the, that's going to be the big one because you know what it's, it's going to do is it's going to come across and it's just going to sit sounds there. Sounds like it's just going to hang it's there so, because it's of very, other very, systems. It's very slow yeah. moving, right. and that's going to be the problem for you know inland with talking, flash I mean, you're flooding. Talking, talking, you know, like 10 that. to 20 inches. I've even you know up to three right. feet. I've even seen maybe up to. 40 inches of rain. Again, a comparison, yeah. Burlington, Champlain Valley, we get about three feet of rain here in a year. In a year. Rain and melted snow. Three feet yeah. of precipitation, right. about 36 inches. Yeah, and they're saying... And they're talking some places may get may get that with one storm. Right. Wow. That's right. just an insane um, amount um, of rain. Nowhere for that water to go. Right. right. We're talking... So, so yeah. I think flooding, flooding Low typically is... Low-lying areas, in, yeah, even inland. In eastern North be. Carolina, we go back to, was it Hurricane Fern, maybe? You have yeah. a lot of hog farms there. I mean, you don't want to even think about, uh, you know, it's a, it's right. a, it's a bad yeah. scene. I'm so. just really concerned. And South Carolina, too, two states I know well. Yeah. Anyway. Yep. So, okay, so uh, the first week of the NFL season has come and gone, and the more things change, they remain the same. New England Patriots, a six-point Favor over the Houston Texans. Vegas, no and, bad guess. Seven points. And what they do, they cover. They always cover the spread. They yeah. went by seven. By seven. <laughs> it was easiest way to describe. It was just a typical kind of a methodical. I didn't. I like I said. I listened to more of it than I saw. I probably caught about half the game. Of course, a fumble. The poor, the poor guy who, who McCarran, fumbled upon yeah. Mr. McCarron, Gonzo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, that, and that made the game. You know, gave Houston a, a shot. They had a shot to. Uh, Tie it late, but didn't didn't get too far. Yeah, you know t uh, Brady, just typical performance. Decent game. The, yep. the official grade in the Herald. Ron Borges, of course, had some issues. He he used to be the Patriot report card guy. Yeah. Now there's another guy, but Brady got an official B from. I, I would have given him a B plus maybe, but decent game, solid. What's game. What's wrong with Ron? He writes oh, he for the Herald, right? He was with the Globe for years. Was with the Herald. I think it was a plagiarism issue, but he ran what? into something about a year ago. And he is not. I have not seen him back in print. Oh. I suspended him, and he hasn't been back on the Herald anymore. Uh, that is the cardinal sin when it comes to. You don't want to. You don't want to do the, that. The, the yeah. kiss of death when they get caught for plagiarism. Right. Although some people, I could, I suppose, I could mention someone not your best Mike friend, Mr. Barnacle, Mike Barnacle. He he's, seems uh, to have survived a his, horrible person. His but, issues with the Globe. <laughs> yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. So, uh, but. But good, decent effort by I'll, the Pats. I'll tell you what, I know week two is coming, but we're already coming to one of the games of the years. I, I think this Patriot Pats, Jag, yeah. Jaguar game. game. Of course, my Jits play ja the four, Jags. Please tell me that's a late, is it a? Is it's it, a 425, 425 game. Yeah, CBS. Yeah. So. Just let you know, uh, we're golfing at 145 on Sunday. Okay, I'll take note of that. <laughs> because no, Joe wants right. to be there. No, he probably, I'm going to put it an air show in Burlington at the airport my kid wants to go uh, to. They've got even like a the Flying Fortress. They have some great old okay. planes yeah. coming anyway. Yeah, but I uh, I saw the Jaguars. Of course, Blake Bortles is about the only average player they have on that team. Otherwise, right. a yeah. very good team. Oh, that defense. Yeah. Is well, they're a top, they're awesome. a potential Super Bowl team with a below average quarterback. Yeah. So that says something yeah. about how good the rest. They of have the team Leonard is. Fournette, who's an animal. He yeah. got hurt, pulled a hammy. Yep. Yeah. And they T.J. Weldon, uh, and they yeah. don't lose much by putting him in. Right. He was a second round pick a few years ago, yeah. I think out of Alabama. Yes. And he, he's a very good player. Uh, uh, Fournette. Uh, Jalen Ramsey's the best defensive yeah. back in football. Yeah. So. Uh, Fournette will not practice this week, but I expect him to play against New England. Mm -hmm. uh, and this guy is just old school. I mean, if he, if he gets 100 yards, he gets it on 25 carries. He's a four yard Mr. Consistent and will break tackles. Uh, so you, I of course, the Pats are the Pats are loving loving this. And you think in the whole scheme of things, this doesn't mean much. But hey, if you're the Patriots who always always play on the in no respect card, it seems like an absurd card for this great team. But again, one of the Jags, Mr. Ramsey, says Gronk. And so this is this is a Boston. This is front page Boston Herald today. Front page Gronk. Watch your mouth. Jags Ramsey says Gronk is overrated. 
huge mistake. Oh, well, this is old news. Loving the, <laughs> this is old news. See, he oh, probably right? what chronicled twenty players <laughs> about a month and a half right. ago. Oh, is that right? Uh, I think he uh, <laughs> gave a critique of every quarterback. Right. And oh, exactly. I, I love that. But still, the Pats, the, Pat, hey, the Pats love him. They, they and, love him. And, and, and Nick is right. Uh, <laughs> Ramsey is, is heralded as the best corner yeah. in football. Is that right? I like. I personally like what, uh, like you said, it is old news, but we haven't really discussed it. No. So I, I love. What he did there, to, it's, it's just kind of like see it from, you know, a perspective of a defensive back like that. You know, mm-hmm. we don't get to see that through guys' eyes yeah. that often. And he was, the way he did it was pretty funny too. Like um, for DeAndre Hopkins in Houston, he said, that man is the best, one of the best wide receivers in football. Yeah. And, you know, he could do it with any quarterback. He's done it with, you know, the worst quarterbacks mm-hmm. in football. I, I could be his quarterback, he yeah. said. So, yeah. you know, it, it was a, it was really cool to to see, you know, what he said. What he said, it gave us something to talk about, and um, it was it was really interesting just kind of see it from that perspective. Yeah. So, I, so I I'm looking it. extremely forward. Uh, fortunate that the G-men do not play until Sunday night. Oh, they got the Sunday night. So I will double, golf. Late double header. Golf, grab a shower, start the DVR up. And then I will watch the Pats. You got your old friend, the Cow- the Cowboys? Is the Cowboys. Cowboys. Yeah. yeah. Where's that game, Hawk? D- down Dallas? in, uh, where is it, Irving, Texas? Irving, is Texas. that where they play? Jerry World. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, the boys are three-point favorites in that one. And let you know the... I'm uh, surprised it's not more. I would have guessed it would have been a bigger line than that. Yeah. Well, the Cowboys... Not a great, not, not a, a good team, team this year. And the uh, I'm Pat, still taking them in that Pat, game, though. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the Patriots are two points spread over the Jags. Was our like friend the Joe claiming honestly, that the Jags game. might be favorites, and we? I think I told I them. S- I think, get without knowing. I guessed two, and I was right. Yeah, I said. If I'm a betting man crazy. in this one, I'm putting the, I'm putting my money on the Jaguars because you know a. They're at home. This is like going to be like a Super Bowl for mm-hmm. this team yeah. because you well, know, they lost the AFC championship. Yeah, not, they have that. They have that revenge game. Yeah. They have. Uh, I mean, th- this is really the first. I, I think this is going to be a coming out party for them because you know they haven't had that big game in Jacksonville yeah. um, since they've been good. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, I think this is this is going to be the game where they kind of emerge and make a statement. I think that they're going to come out and beat the Patriots by you know. 10 points. That's a fair assessment. It is a yeah, statement game. Crazy. Now, the Jags are a much, much better team than the Patriots. The, the, the difference is, is much, much, well, much better. The difference mm-hmm. is Tom Brady. Now, I'm telling you right now, <clears throat> even if uh, Kirk Cousins was quarterback of the Jags, they would be a better team than the Patriots. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I think uh, Kirk Cousins is a much better quarterback than um, Cousins Blake Bortles. Is, well, he yeah. is much better. That's my point. Is Even a guy of the caliber of Kirk Cousins Right. Would make the Jags a better team. Do you think if Brady was on the Jaguars, do you think they would go undefeated? Nineteen. Um, what I would say is, <laughs> don't waste your Sunday afternoons. I I would not make a ridiculous statement, but I would probably bet uh, fifteen and one if if yeah. Brady was quarterback for the Jags. Mm. And again, they, they've got uh, uh, just a great tandem of Fournette and Yeldon. Uh, at running back and uh, for this uh, think, second game with no Mr. Edelman and stuff, I think most Patriots fans are saying, especially the four games without Edelman, saying hey, right. they're going to lose a game. This is obviously going to be yeah, the, and something the that, likeliest loss. But I'm yeah. not conceding. I I hope. I just hope it's. A I think it'll be a good competitive game. game. Uh, I would but think it would I be. just I can't see the Jaguars not coming out. Yeah. You know, full as as much as they can, just going for the statement. So one thing though that surprised Patriots me, defense, so it looked, the it Patriots looked like defense it little, looked really little, good, little, little and I think that's simply because Matt Patricia left. I think Matt Patricia. Well, it, Matt, not I, a good I think start it's. For Detroit, I always right? thought he was overrated. I think it really yeah. came out that he Boy. he is just a terrible football coach. Super Bowl on, on Monday night. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I was sitting there watching that game. Uh, I had Matt Stafford on my fantasy team, and I was saying, okay, Matt Stafford, if I if he throws for four touchdowns and four hundred wow. yards. I can win my game. You know what? I can create the comeback. I thought it was possible against the I Jackson. have Stafford on one of my fantasy teams as a backup. Right. But now I ponder that. They're playing the lowly Jets. Right. And uh, Matt Stafford, who was the highest paid quarterback in the league for about one week right. uh, this year. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and uh, aside for Buffalo, which we'll talk about later, we know if the – they will be lucky to win a game this year. Is that right? I'll guarantee horrible, horrible you thing. right now they'll uh, be the they've first. Got jo- they've got Josh Allen starting this week, right. though. I think Nathan yeah. Peterman um, is done. I- he's done for. Uh, so yeah. I think, you know, jo- don't give up on Josh Allen yet. And don't give up oh, on, no, the, no, on no, the Bills. Oh, no, 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 I'm not. But there's such a huge learning curve. And I'm I think adamant okay. about, under any circumstances, playing a rookie quarterback 
this early in the season. He needs to wait till the midway. Yeah, but that's both it's a home game against you know the Chargers. I, I think that it, he'll be okay. The Chargers are a very good team. I, I think I think he'll be okay um, because I, I still I don't think the Bills are an overly terrible team. Obviously. Um, Baltimore, that was, you know, didn't but Baltimore. The, I mean, didn't the Bills make the playoffs right, last year? Right, right. The Bills made the playoffs. Why they gave they, the Jaguars they have quite dropped a off so, so much They gave up, they lost a lot of their offensive line. Yeah. Obviously, they lost Tyrod Taylor. LaShawn McCoy is a shell of himself, yeah. and it, surrounded by all the drama, too. So it, it's one of those deals where they're not going to be the same team. They're not going to be a playoff team, but I, I think that they've still got five wins yeah. in them. I think if Josh Allen's a good quarterback, this team could go seven yeah. and nine. Yeah. Their decision was Tyrod Taylor already reached his ceiling. You know, best, he could win nine games. He, he's not good enough to win a playoff game. They were in position to get a Josh Allen out of Wyoming yep. where he has a much bigger upside. However, it's going to take three years for that to happen. So Buffalo Bill fans, unfortunately, again, are going to have to be an extremely patient team. Yep. It's been a long time since a Jim Kelly-led Buffalo Bill team went to the Super Bowl for four straight years. That's been... And you know Nearly what? 20 years. For a team in the AFC East right now, that's perfectly okay if you need three years to oh, become well, good. Right, because Brady three will three years be gone. from now, Brady's Patriots gone. are going to be in the, the same spot where the Bills are right now. Uh, Belichick's going to be gone. Brady's going to yes, be gone. Yes, absolutely. Kraft might even be gone, yep, honestly. Probably so um, I think if you're, t- if you're a team in the AFC East right now, you put together that five-year plan, and in five years, you can go out yep. and win a Super Bowl. Nick, you're making a lot of good points. And it's very true what he's saying is New England will be the king in that division as long as Brady continues yeah. to play. It just made me think of a stat I saw, um, kind of a scary stuff in the, when you mentioned the Bills. Um, Super Bowl losers, guess when the last time a Super Bowl <laughs> loser has come back the next year to win the Super Bowl? Or, uh, I'm sorry, has just gotten back to the Super Bowl. Forget winning it. Would be the Cowboys. How about it was a bill? How about yeah, a quarter a quarter century? Yeah. Super Bowl losers have hmm. a terrible yeah. track record. Yeah. Patriots being, for what it's worth, yeah. the Super Patriots, Bowl Patriots, I, I well, think, are, could be a favorite for that this year, so, depending on how Jacksonville goes. Yeah. Ridiculous in the NFL. So many teams that make the playoff, they come back the following season, and it's less than 50% of the teams will make it back to the playoffs yeah. the following season. Right when you think, oh, no, this is a great young team. We're going to start a dynasty. But the, Jet, the yeah. Jets are getting there. Are some folks who think the Jets are the are the rising team in the AFC. Maybe maybe a bunch of people. I, I think that the Jets are going to finish second in the AFC this yeah. year. I, I think that they'll be 6-10 and 10 in a best-case scenario. Is that right? Um, that's, the, that's the best record you give them, even after their, for their first game? They played a high school football team yeah. on Monday night. I mean, yeah. Matt Patricia, I think it's obvious at this point that he is a god-awful coach. Interesting. Um, that I, was the observation I had was I think he might be over his head. Well, you look what? at Matt Patricia, his well, defensive hard, he's, hard his defenses in New England regular, regularly gave up 30 points a game. Well, they're yeah. typically, I mean, his defense were typically bend, bend don't break defenses. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, at times they were fairly decent. He was far from a good offense or defensive coordinator, yeah. and I think a telling sign yeah. um, for, for Matt Patricia here was the way the Patriots acted when he left compared to the way uh, they reacted when Josh, Josh McDaniels, McDaniels got the contract offer yeah. it from Indy. Because what they said, basically what they said is, Matt Patricia, we don't care if you leave. Go right ahead. Mm-hmm. Leave. Go, well, go I mean, do after, your job. After the Super Bowl, how right. hard to get real excited yeah. about Matt Josh Patricia. McDaniels, they said, yeah. we will pay you the salary of a head coach if you stick around and be our coach in waiting. So well, there, It sounds like he got a five-year, now reports coming right. out that he got a five-year contract. I forget, right. did you see dollar figures with that? Um, Pretty decent, I don't. I I, I, there were dollar figures. Do think, I don't Hawk? remember Maybe exactly like 10, what they 10 mil or something, two mil a year or something yeah. or more. Oh, he probably gets around four. No, years. some more, yeah. some more. Uh, but, but yeah, he's being paid waiting. like a you head know, coach. Yeah. To yeah. piggyback in your thought here, uh, great coordinators worth more than are, are, are not always successful coaches. And I, yeah. I, I'll give you an example yeah. of two. Wade Phillips. Yep. It's now 71 yeah. years of age. Really? He's even older than you. Wow, even okay. older than me. Even older than you. Hard to imagine. He's the defensive coordinator. For a team that I'm falling in love with, the LA Rams huh. are just, you know, you know, we'll get into them. But everywhere Wade Phillips has been, his defense has been one of the very best in the league. He has he, tremendous talent on that he, line as well. Yeah, they built that defense up. They uh he's been a head coach with no success. And the, the other side of the coin on the offensive side is North Turner yep. is up there in age. Wherever he's been. 
as an offensive coordinator, they scored points. He was a former Cowboy coach, mm. might well, have coached the, the Cards. He, he I'm not sure. He coached the no, uh, he coached no. the Chargers when I was uh, okay when I was growing up. Yeah. Um, uh, and you know his Chargers teams with Ladainian Tomlinson and Philip Rivers in their prime. Yep. They, those were high scoring football uh, teams, but they just couldn't yeah. ever really put it together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I would tend to agree with you with the Patriots. That was probably yeah. addition by subtraction, right. and I'm not even sure who the new. D coordinator is for the. I best. think it's Belichick, honestly. I, I don't think they hired one. I, I think guess they, I guess, they, I guess they don't have an official. Yeah. I think the line, Mike, Mr. Flores, I think is as close as they have to yeah. a defensive okay. coordinator. Yeah. But no, I think it's, I think it's very easy to overreact to a lot of things that happened week one simply yeah. because we haven't oh, had football yeah. since February. Um, but I think that saying that. Matt Patricia is not going to be around long as the Lions head coach is not an overreaction. Right, right. Hawk, we haven't even talked about your your guys. Oh, Connor, I'm trying to avoid that expected. topic as, no. as much as... Now, the Patriots, they I think... They didn't play terribly. I, they cut three people, uh, yeah. and one of the guys they picked up was... I got him right at here. At this point, uh, just a huge bust. Corey Coleman was Corey the Coleman. 15th Former. pick. 15th first pick in the 2016 draft. Okay. Released at, by the Bills a month ago. He had been acquired in a trade, and I'm just reading from the Herald here. He joins a long list of former first-rounders brought in by Coach Bill Belichick, offering them a chance to rejuvenate their careers. Coleman was a star at Baylor, who the Dukies play at Baylor this week, the 2-0 and Dukies. Right. They lost their quarterback, though. Um, but hasn't come close to living up to expectations in the NFL. In two seasons with the Browns, he had 56 catches, 718 yards, 5 TDs. Maybe the Pats will bring out his best. Well, you never know. Did you watch Hard Knocks the summer? I Cle- didn't get any. I didn't get I've to never, see I've any. never even oh, seen it. Oh, it's a great that. show. Cleveland yeah. Browns were the team, and of oh. course he was on Cleveland. Oh, okay. And again, first round pick, 15th overall. Wow. What they garnered wow. from the Buffalo Bills was a seventh round wow. draft choice. Couldn't even make the lowly huh. Buffalo Bills and the Patriots yeah. with nothing to lose taking a yeah. flyer out of it. Now, yeah. I don't you know if know. it's a maturity issue, but if yeah. anybody can whip a player yeah. to shape, it's Bill Belichick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Philip Dorsett was a first yeah, round a pick game, by yeah. Indianapolis. A bust, just an absolute Played bust. Well but coming, so. now, coming, coming finally, played the best game. Sounds right. Like a bit now, coming up going to New game. England, yeah. where a lot of players don't like to play because. Yeah. They make you work all the time. There have been former Patriots that would go in there for a cup of coffee. Oh, we didn't mm-hmm. like it there. All they make you do is work all the time. Uh, that, that that's why they have five more, right. five Not rings. a fun place to be. Hey, No. Hey, you know, you may, maybe you, you want to have work fun or do you want to win? win. A right. right exactly. No, that's really. But Dorsett, not coming off a good season, no. but, had a, but had a very right. good game. No, right. You know, and again. Key, key guy. If right. he has a good season. Do not make guy. any assertions after one week of football. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it takes more than one week to, oh. to develop a pattern. Right. Right. Now, uh, getting to the Giants, I, I will make an assertion. Eric Flowers, please quit football. Now, Eric <laughs> Flowers was a ninth or 10th overall pick really? out of University of Miami. I guess they call it the U. They, they, okay. call, they do call it the, uh, uh, the Hurricanes. Right. The, uh, he was left tackle. Now great he's, now he's great he's pick. Seen. Is that okay. right? He was a top 10 pick? Yeah, he was either ninth or 10th. Wow. This was three years ago. Wow. He was the preordained star of to the protector of Eli Manning's back. Stinks. Just, I, I, I don't even have the verbiage to describe hmm. how bad he is. So what do the Giants do in the offseason? I'm not degrading this guy, but they had to overspend for an above average steady left tackle hmm. who formerly was employed by the New England Patriots by the name of Nate Solder. Hmm. Steady, a steady player at best, never had made, made an all pro team, and now he's the highest paid tackle in the NFL. And again, it's law of supply and demand. The Giants just had to make a move. So, what do they do with a former first round pick? Well, you bring him over to right tackle, okay, where it's a lot less issues to deal. He, very first play, he got a tripping penalty, which you ever rarely see. I mean, he a literally tripping, I didn't know tripping that was stuck really his leg that. up. Really? And I think either play after or shortly thereafter got a holding penalty. Allowed a couple sacks, uh, and more so than sacks, uh, just a lot of hurries on Eli's part. Yeah. And I always, always, when people get on Eli Manning's case, these national writers, 
you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Mm. You ask the Nighthawk that has seen every single snap Eli Manning <laughs> has ever taken. Is that, I, is that what you've he, seen every, you've he, seen every single snap? Uh, I've, right, I've, uh, there's not yeah. been a snap Eli <laughs> Manning's ever taken that yeah. I have not seen, okay? And they make, you know, they generalize on things. Now, he was under duress, again, rightly so, with, with the Jags, uh, but he played okay. Uh, Barkley, you know, again, Other they're, they're the run wasn't right. All that thank great. you. Okay, Barkley was averaging two point one yards a carry. And then he had like a sixty-eight yard touchdown. Not his fault. Touchdown. The line stinks. Right. So you run off a sixty-eight yard run. Shaquan Barkley is a home run hitter, very yeah. capable of doing that. Well, you know, for, for the non-watcher of the game, they'll see Barkley. X number of carries for 106 yards. He ended up with a 6.1 average. I don't even think he had a six-yard run the whole game. Yeah. That just super inflated uh, his stats, although it put that big play put him right back in the game. Right. But the Giants will go nowhere until they can solve that offensive line. And, yeah. and again... You were worried about, you were worried about that big time preseason. Oh, absolutely. Course, right? yeah. And again... Uh, young Nick here, do not make assertions of the first week. We're playing against the best defense in football. Yeah, is that right? don't, best defense yeah, in football. Yeah. Sure, I yeah. would, Jaguars yeah. are very um, good. I, so I'm saying to myself, okay, okay, we survived. We beat the spread. If yeah, I, I think to come away with a five-point loss against Jacksonville, yeah. I'm okay with that. Um, another positive takeaway, uh, Odell Beckham played Tr played tremendously well against the Hawk, best Hawk, against Hawk, the best defensive face, back in football. You're not buying that. Well, Hawk? he had a he played well, but he had 11 catches, and these were all dink passes. Huh. To say uh, Jalen Ramsey had a bad game is it's not. He, he was never able to go downfield. That's what, well. The, that's what you got to do. How many? I mean, how many? Yards, not even 100 yards. No, he didn't even average 10 yards. I, I think uh, a catch. I, I, he he was he took what the Jags gave him. Okay, right. that that's a fair mm -hmm. statement. Right. Now the the Giants never could go for the home run throw during the game. A because the pressure was on Eli, where he didn't get three and a half seconds in the pocket oh. to let it rip. Uh, uh, Shepard had four catches. Sterling Shepard. Uh, Evan Ingram had. Two catches, might have, he dropped one for sure, might have dropped a second. And this Ingram is such an athletic, he was the first round pick last year, such a physique, but he led the NFL tight ends last year with 11 drops. Okay, yeah. I don't care how many great plays he made, you cannot drop passes. Because yeah. generally speaking, when you're going to the tight end, they're on third down plays, yeah. uh, that has to be corrected. Hmm. Uh, so, to have a barometer of where the Giants really are at, give me a call about 20 minutes uh, before midnight Sunday okay. night uh, because the Cowboys have receded. Uh, uh, a lot of their star players are no longer with that team. Yeah. Uh, Dak Prescott is an average quarterback at best. He was reliant on a great receiving core. And a great uh, offensive line, too. A, Best offensive line in football. He had a Hall of Fame tight end, one of the most underrated players in all time, Jason Witten. Not only could Witten, Witten get open, he was an incredible blocker. I, I don't think Witten was as effective in Dak's time there um, oh, as he was yep. as he was with Tony Romo. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and also Odell Beckham Jr. 11 catches, 111 yards for a 10.1 average. Okay. I'll take that against Jalen Ramsey. I, I, yep. I will. I no, think that's a right. Good Considering it was good against. Game. Uh, so, uh, wait again. Wait, wait until yeah. Sunday night, and we'll see where the Giants fare. Uh, yeah. They just have a monster schedule this year, which I do not understand because we had the second worst team in football, and generally you get a real powder puff schedule the next season, but it yeah. didn't work out. I think the I, I think that this isn't a season that you can really expect a whole lot out of the Giants anyway. I think best case scenario, they go eight and eight. Oh, that's extremely um, the best. But um, I, I think that, you know, it's okay. This is a learning season where they have a lot of talent there that's kind of, you've got to figure out how to mold that together. And, you know, you got to really gauge what you still have in Eli Manning because I don't think they do know what they have in Eli Manning anymore. He's definitely not what he was five years ago. Um, is he still, you know, starting... Co starting quarterback um, quality 
I don't know that either. Like well, you, like uh, you said, talk to me after right. after the game. But on again, Sunday, if but you have watched the game, this is the year where they can the figure past things five out. years, just a deplorable offensive line. Tom Brady would be average at best. Seriously, if he had played behind the New York Giant line. Well, I think the Patriots' no, offensive line is just as, had had the just as bad. Offensive and line. just to show you, they spent they opened the bank vault to get Solder from the Pats. The second round pick, which was the 34th overall, they spent it on Will Hernandez, uh, who's the starting left guard for him. He's start, he starting? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, yeah. the other microscope the Giants are under is the adage... Notice, Nick, I didn't say old adage, not necessarily. I wouldn't have yelled the at you. The adage today. is you do not draft running backs in the first round. Aside from saying that, you certainly do not draft a running back second overall, which with, they did with Shaquan Barkley out of Penn State. With a lousy offensive line, is that what you're going to say? With a, now, the thinking behind the Giants was these quarterbacks that came out in the, in the top ten, Sam Darnold, went right after. The Jets were like, oh my God, we got done all. Yeah. The Giants believed, and that's the same process I had, none of these quarterbacks were top 10 worthy on my part. Uh, Josh Allen went, what, what, went seventh overall? Yeah. Uh, Baker, I, I, don't like Baker, Jay, I don't like Rosen or, or Allen. I Rosen like Baker went Mayfield. ninth or 10th, and Baker Mayfield uh, out of Oklahoma went number one overall. To Cleveland. Cleveland. I think Baker Mayfield's going to be a good quarterback. Well, I, think I think he, he really will. I think about Mayfield. I will say about him, he's a throwback player. He's a tough yeah. guy. He reminds he, me he's a lot a throwback. of Drew Brees. He yeah. is a throwback. Um, and I think, mm. I, I'm still the verdict's de- obviously still out on all of them. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that Darnold's going to be. Um, right up there too. I, I really like he might think be a pretty good quarterback. Now, what, I really what, think. What, that what did he do the other night? First pass. First pass was intercepted. Inter- interception, no, but after right. for, for a rough touchdown. No, after that, that first pass? Yeah. After that, that offense okay. got it figured out. Yeah. Now he didn't do all of it by any means, but uh, I mean his offense did put up 48 points against. But he looked. I mean he looked pretty comfortable against back what there. was a decent team. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so. I, I watched. I didn't watch all the game. Watched first, a little first, bit of it. First I think game. He looked decent. Yeah, and the other thing, you know, we'll finish up in the Giants. Their best pass rusher, really good player, Olivier Vernon, didn't play last week. Mm -hmm. Uh, Went on the bike, pedaled the bike today, didn't practice. So it's highly Mm -hmm. questionable if he'll be there. And due to that fact, they only had one sack uh, last week. So, Mm -hmm. And again, I will hearken back to what you said. Do not make assertions after one week. The Cowboys seem to be mediocre at best. So we're going to find out what our medal is. Is that the right word? Yeah. yeah uh, su- Sunday night. So. So again, pretty much, uh, pretty much as expected, Hawk. I mean, with with your Giants. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and again, Las Vegas had the Jags at six. Huh. We won, lost by five. So Vegas, I think Vegas the performance level was there. And on a sad note, too, Saturday afternoon, I went to Massisquoi. For yeah, um, MVU's geez. first home game. Wow. For football? Football. And yeah. they played I heard Mount St. Joseph. Uh, who brought about 15 players. They down. literally had 16 players, wow. which matched what Cisco had, 16 players. The numbers are Did way Did Cisco have, they had, they had a lot more players last few years? Yes. Yeah. Really? Okay. It was a nice day. I expected a ton of people. So I brought my extraordinarily great lounge chair, huh. brought it down to the 20 yard line. I had my little cooler full of Diet Mountain Dew <laughs> and little <laughs> snacks. They allow outside beverages? Uh, well, <laughs> let me tell you a quick story. Probably I don't want to see had, alcoholic beverages. I, I had my little Washington National. It's a cloth cooler with yeah. kind of space age inside. Yeah. Really nice cooler. Is there a so, snack bar? There, is there a snack bar there? I, I think they. I think they. There's like They've a snack bar. Over, I don't remember. It's if at I the had soccer it. field. Okay. I think so they, Duke. I, I yeah. So I'm in my uh, uh, gravity free lounge chair. I've yeah. got my little Washington <laughs> National cooler. Is this the same one that you brought to all the baseball games? Absolutely. When I was in high school? It's okay. the most handsome looking cooler you'll <laughs> ever find. So. <laughs> We when I, I just to, not to interrupt you, but I remember the first the first time the first times I saw you like on the I, on the sidelines of our of my baseball games. I was like, who is that dude that keeps showing up and falling asleep at all of our games? I do well. <laughs> I'm just lounging. Um, so this happened a couple few years ago. So the, before the start of the game, I'm lounging. I've got my little cooler there. An official 
walks right to me. And being as dumb as I am is, oh gosh, this is such a friendly guy. Coming over, just say hello to a fan. Yeah. He comes up to me, he says, what's in that bag? I go, <laughs> when you say an official? Uh, uh, a referee, a, really? a zebra. Really? Yeah, come, what do you got in that cooler? Oh. Uh, that Mountain Dew, that one? Mount Dew. And I don't remember if I had to open it. He wanted to make sure it wasn't beer. Really? Yeah. So that brings my that brings to mind my one arrest story. But if you want to keep going with yeah. sports, that's fine. Yeah. So MSJ, it's been a legendary story over the last dozen years. Uh, they have a total of a hundred kids that go to the school. It's a Catholic school. Uh -huh. Just on a hundred kids. Hundred kids. Yes. So fifty boys, fifty girls, and. Back in the day, many years ago, MSJ was Vermont's powerhouse football uh, oh, program. Yeah. It was the cat's meow. Do they use that term anymore? MSJ out of, out of Rutland, right? Yes. yes. In Rutland. In, yep. in, in, Multiple our, our, Division I And, CHA of course, our good friend, our golf partner, Joe, oh, is right. a graduate of uh, that school, I think, 1965. Oh, wow. And oh. uh, they were co-opted last couple of years with Pulteney oh. because... They, which we'll get into, appears to be the new wave in Vermont yeah, football. Yeah, Burlington, Burlington, South Burlington. Which will, right. So, Pulteney had enough folks this year to, to be their own team. Oh, really? Left MSJ with, there were 16 players. Now, what they were looking to do was play eight on eight football. While there's teams out there that don't want to get into this charade of right. a game called football, they agreed to play. 11 on 11 with Missiscoy, perhaps knowing what the level of play Missiscoy has at this point. Hmm. So they came up and played. So I thought, well, this was wow. the opportunity for the T-Birds to win. Wow. And God bless their hearts. I, I mean, I, <clears throat> they, they try harder than anybody I see. After the first half, Mr. Duke, it was 36 nothing wow. for MSJ. And at that point, when you get to the mm, second half, yeah. you're up by 35 points. Running, the clock keeps going. Running, running time, clock, yeah. 12 minute quarter. Time. Where that first half seemed like took forever. Wow. So yeah, two 12 minute quarters. And MSJ, which I will make an assertion here, probably might be the most empathetic team in the state, yeah. knowing <clears throat> the pain right. they've gone through. And uh, wow. uh, the coach of uh, MSJ just pulled. The, the horses, they they had a good passing game. They didn't throw the ball. Oh, they yeah. just kept handing off, and they were real polite no, about it. Boy, that's so, yeah. and the good thing about Missisquoi's schedule, they started the first game on the road, I believe, against Windsor, in which they lost 41 to nothing. 41 to but nothing. the next four games were at the Thunderdome. I get, or is that what they call it? Not Thunderdome. They call it the Thunder. They call it Thunder Valley. Which Thunder Valley. Thank Thunder you. Valley. Thunder Valley. Which is there I think, is there a valley? No. Not really. But it's I think just it's a, a great it's nickname. Just a, a clearing. So, dude, uh, the wow. next uh, f the four home games they have were consecutive, all in September. Yeah. Okay. So I would be able to watch the great foliage they have on the side of the field. Real great place to watch football. Yeah. Well. Lo and behold, I, I get a phone call last night that wow. due to the fact that uh, Missisco had four injuries, uh, they're not be able, they are not able to play this upcoming Saturday. So they, they, for, they forfeited this exactly Saturday. the for, forfeit of the yeah. game. So, and and, and, aren't and there you was a blurb. That, there was a blurb in the messenger. Aren't you concerned? Are you a little skeptical they'll even play play another football game well, there? Well, I told the person I was with the other day. Sadly, so just making a wow. comment that it wouldn't <laughs> surprise me if this program had shut down before season ended. Didn't the program get off to a decent start? Number, number, a lot wise? of bodies. Yeah. What? So Nick, a lot what, of bodies. Just well, Nick, no you talent. just graduated there. They, no talent. Happened. The but problem I mean, if they is had the bodies. The kids just get, okay. Here's the here's the issue. Yeah. Um, Dennis Hill is just a yeah, former MVU the, and the principal. former principal, right? Just an Former idiot. Former BFA principal. Uh, just, just an absolute Hope, idiot. Hopefully he's not watching. Um, he, he works for Essex High you now. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad he does because he came in from BFA yeah. um, my freshman year of high school. Hmm. And he immediately said, MVU needs football. Hmm. Great. I agree with you. They do need football. Hmm. I, it, it's a great sport. I, I, 
think it's a it's really cool. It gives kids good opportunities. Yeah. And the, let me interrupt you. The kids that give the opportunity are generally kids <clears throat> that don't partake <clears throat> in any other sport <clears throat> or extracurricular activity. Right. Because right. You took you took a lot of kids that you know were big lumber jack just type. sitting at home playing video games yeah. and eating oh. Doritos and drinking Mountain Dew. Well, are you talking about oh. the kids or me? <laughs> oh, okay. No, um, yeah, you, you play video Yahoo games? Mountain Dew. Well, the yeah, difference yeah. between me and Nick is I'm drinking Diet Mountain Dew, yeah. and he's, he's drinking regular. Diet. And the weight difference here is about seven I pounds. I'm, I think I'm thinking of a 60 Minutes um, episode about West Virginia, and and people, uh, a significant portion of the population with just dental issues and Mountain Dew being the, the favorite oh. drink in the state. Yeah. Um, anyway, I oh. brush the beat up on you. I brush people. and floss twice oh, every day. Yeah, good for yep. you. And, my, one of my favorite sayings is dental hygiene never takes a vacation. I finally got an electric, do you call them electric tooth? I finally yeah. got one of those yeah. guys. Anyway, sorry. Um, but anyway sorry. So he decides instead of doing the smart thing, this is where they went wrong. And building, in, and, and what building you, it what up. What they like needed to do Saint is, Sealers. To, yeah, exactly. You put something in at Swanton. Now, Swanton Rec didn't really want any part of it, yeah. but that's okay. You, if they were going to have the funds to do this, Patriots gave them a large donation. They got another large donation from Dick's Sporting Goods. Is that right? They, equi equipment and stuff? Equipment. They got jerseys. You know, oh, they really? got money for the goalposts, everything huh. that they needed. Huh. Um, and they just got trigger happy. Dennis Hill got trigger happy. Huh. And he said, we want a varsity team in three years. Wow. Well, newsflash, <laughs> you got to teach your kids how to play football before yeah. you tell them to go play football against kids who have been now, playing since they were seven. what occurred the first two years was kind of a false prophecy. I'm coming right. up to They play JV teams. Yeah. Fool, and they beat fool, up fool's on goal, them. Fool's goal. Right. Whatever. They beat up goal, on them. And they, they perhaps uh, well, was pyrite, which is fake yeah. gold. They went like five and two each season with J and J with against with JV, JV yeah. teams, right. and 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 we were playing, you know, freshmen right yes. through seniors, right. and we also had Hunter Tardy on the team, who's a, who, who, who plays was, at Castleton now. He's on Castleton really? now, right. and this kid is so fast. That you put this kid on so early that he would rush night. for four hundred yards. So again. fast yeah. at night that he would shut his light off. And get underneath the sheets before the room even got dark. That's yeah, how fast he this would, guy was. If if this kid if if this kid would have played for you know a, a Burlington or yeah. a CVU, he would have been rushing for 350, 400. Is that right? he is really He's that, that good. Talented. Let me just one of. He thing. was running for 200 a game against with this really. with MVU, which he is just came like I said, they don't know how to play football. He came out and played baseball last year as a senior for the oh, first yeah. time. I was down in Middlebury, and. He gets by by great athleticism. There was a low liner right. coming to him, and the way the center fielder typically would catch the ball, he did not do. I have never seen. Uh, as far as I knew, he had never played baseball right. before. He came out, hit 250, and played fantastic okay. defense. Duke, he uh. ran in for that ball with his speed. He literally dove and did a complete 360 yeah. flip. Yeah. Really? Which I had never seen anybody because, again, he had never played baseball, yeah. but he could get right. by. And mm. such a nice, nice kid. Oh, such a down to earth kid. He's yeah. been through a lot. I don't know yeah. if uh, anybody's read the Burlington Free Press feature on him. He, he did, came I through read, I read that a day, very right. difficult childhood <clears throat> to do this. And, yeah. you know, knowing, knowing Hunter from just growing up around him, hmm. he had completely changed since when he was uh, adopted. And, you know, he was the kid his freshman, sophomore year when he was, you know, hmm. having those tough uh -huh. issues. Um, he wouldn't last 10 days on the sports team. He would, you know, be right off the team no. immediately. We tried that's to get him great, to play baseball. Tried to great. get him to do play me a basketball. favor and it's find a, that and print that article for me? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can do that. that. I, may, um, I may have it, in fact, still of mine. It was a Sunday free press story a yes. couple weeks ago. Um, but I anyway, um, so, yeah, I mean, they just, they had the opportunity to do this the right way and, you know, start a youth program, get these kids, you know, teach them how to play football when they're in fifth grade. And you know, get give them those three years, and then you know, to about now you could get that varsity program started. Yeah. You could have the numbers, you could have the talent, and you wouldn't be losing every game fifty to nothing. I, I feel bad for the current coach, um, Chad Coffee. Chad Coffee, who's a right. great guy, he, His first and a great year. coach. And I, I feel really bad because you know. I think eventually what's going to happen is Chad's. This is just going to be out of his hands because 
they, they've been dug such a hole by the people who made the worst decisions possible at the beginning of this. On the bright side, though, <clears throat> is his dad is Rob Coffey, yeah. who is the czar of Franklin no, the, County Steeler football. Franklin County He's Steelers. been there for like 40 years yeah. running that program. And I talked to Rob before the game. They would typically graduate 20 Steelers into yeah. the yeah. Bob White program. And you look at the BFA so, program now with the Steelers, BFA, BFA football is right up there. Consistent. They, they in, were in the semi, state yeah. semifinals yeah. last year. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's and, clear and Rob knows, as day. They know him and his son that they, they need to develop more kids into the feeder program. Is there hope? They don't even have a feeder program. That's the problem. What the reason MVU is losing so many games is because you they start the same time everybody else starts, but those first three weeks, while the rest of the team is while the other teams in the state are learning systems and you know uh, uh, memorizing the playbook and and getting everything down, and so they become a well-oiled machine. MVU is having to teach these kids the basics of football, yep. nah. like how to tackle while other teams are setting yep. up plays. Yep. They, they're learning yep. how to tackle, how to throw yep. the football. It just sets them behind, yep. and it's never going to change and, unless and, they get that feeder program, and, and, and no coach matter who's Chad the coach. Coffey did intimate in the article Monday about that's the process we're in, is, is uh, learning the fundamentals, which unfortunately you hate to do in high school football, right. and developing a team concept. Right. I'm and, sure. I'm very sure that, that Chad can, you know, bring the bring the uh, playbook that he was using with fifth graders right over in into the yeah. <laughs> into yeah. the MVU program yeah. because you know that's where they at, that's where they're at, and it's, it's it. Bottom line, it really sucks because it's something that could help this the the community so much, you know. Um, uh, BFA is such a big event with football. You see them pack the stands at Collins Purley every and that's Friday what night. Football is Nick. It's yeah. not a. It's an event. It's, it's an a event. weekly event, and it brings the community together. And MVU, they had the opportunity to kind of replicate that. Obviously, um, they're not as big as BFA. They're not going to get as big as BFA, and that's okay. My attraction to the program was the negativity towards the program. They go before the taxpayers every year and ask for $10,000 for the program. And, and unfortunately... Don't and they don't get it because <clears throat> the stigma that football is going through. Now, what people don't know is Missiscoy pays over $60,000 a year for a simple ice rental at right. the Highgate Arena. But so if, you look at, if, if we, you go to MVU hockey games, that is an event. That is a community thing. Where there, you can, I mean, any given Friday, Saturday night when MVU is hosting a hockey game, there's going to be 500, 600 right. people but inside, we MV, are inside the Highgate the Arena. Embryo. Oh, I don't know where I come up with these. <laughs> Duke, I'm about ready to overtake you with the wordsmith. Hey, panel. you're doing a great job, um, Huck. We're at the embryo stage of this football program. It, it's going to take time. Embryonic stage, if you want to be. Okay, <laughs> there, see? Uh, the embryonic stage. It's going to take years to develop to the point where... The problem is they don't have seems, years. But it seems but like it, it's going the wrong well, way Well, and that's the and other is. issue. And the best way, to, to your point, it's going the other way, is South Burlington and Burlington, two of the bigger high schools in northern Vermont, if not the whole state of Vermont. Yeah. They're now a co-op team. What do they call themselves? The Sea Wolves? Yep. Burlington, South Burlington, Sea Wolves. Sea Wolves. Oh, okay, yeah. two they teams play half their of games that at, size. At SB, half their games at BHS. Huh. So. It's re- and, right. of course, BHS. But you got, look at it. Both of them. Both of them have artificial fields. Yeah. They wow. they have the buckles to, to pump yeah. money into yeah. their sport facilities. Wow. Yet, they can't get the kids in. Yeah. And, of course, we're in the era of now where mommy doesn't want little Billy to right. play football yeah. because I don't want him to get hurt. And there's, uh, unfortunately, too many mommies out there like that because I've always said football builds character and character builds men. How's BFA but doing numbers-wise this year? BFA BFA is going to have one of the best teams in the state. So there's numbers. Number, numbers, are, numbers are, I'm not sure what their numbers are. I haven't caught have, one of their games. They, but they were down last year. They, down, they might have had... 25 people fit, last year. They, I don't know what the numbers They lost are. in the semifinals to mm. state champion, mm. though. Mm. Uh, mm. But, Richard, to get back to your point on it seems yeah. MVU is going down, here's why. Like the coach that the, the back, coach that was here. hired by MVU, mm. Eric Bushy, yeah. um, decided that when the program was, you know, He's barely a, staying afloat. Their second coach. Their second, second coach. coach. Uh, second uh, coach. Uh, he was hired to, you know, take the program to the next level yeah. after Dennis Hill left. This man decided to go spend $4,000 in uniforms and put the program just completely into debt 
where you know, it's going to be tough. Dennis Hill or Eric Bushy? Eric now? Bushy Eric did that Bushy. and um, just completely ran the program. You know, when it looked like they were going to start, you know, going places, he ran the program even farther <laughs> into the ground. Got really? fired, which you know. Yeah. And but. when I showed up to the game, Duke, and I'm not exaggerating, I don't think there were even a hundred people. Right. And I remember. And it sucks because you and know. I remember a few years ago, I estimated. Opening day had about 700. So it seemed people. like they yeah. had gotten off to a pretty. They, there's a lot of enthusiasm. They were off to a good stuff. start. There was enthusiasm, wow. but it just hasn't developed, and it never will until they get that yeah. feeder program. Uh, nothing against Chad Coffey. I think he's going to be going to do the best that he possibly can yeah, with this like program. He's in an impossible he is situation. doing a very good job already. I think from yeah. what I've heard, everybody loves this guy. He's a great yeah. coach. He's a great football mind. Yeah. But I don't think Bill Belichick can take this team into a winning sure. record. It, it's just such a bad situation because yeah. of the people that have and, that started it out. They put and, it into and, a bad and, situation. And, and we're hmm. enjoying an extremely warm, mild week of weather. Saturday's forecast is 82 80 degrees. Yeah. Now, if, if you got the full boat of 16 players... Most of them are playing both ways, <clears throat> 82 degree weather. I didn't even think of that. that, that that's, wow. that's pretty Most tough. Most are do. playing both ways, of course. Wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's just Boy, unfortunate. That, I'm sorry, that's just that's very discouraging but, to hear that. Yeah, you know, me thinks that, uh, you know, I'm not sure you and I, Duke, will live to see it, but I think at some point you won't see uh, football in Vermont anymore. Yeah, I, I told think, you I had that. I mentioned the Wall Street Journal story some months ago, and I think yeah. Rutland was. Uh, the Dateline in Vermont, talking about MSJ and just how football in Vermont, and then they had the Dateline of Mobile, Alabama, where things are going the other the yeah. other way. What I what Wildly I do think will happen. What I think will happen eventually is we're going to see more, <coughs> you know, schools combined schools with Burlington, together, South obviously. Carolina. I think. Yeah. Uh, I think 10, 15 years down the line, you're, we're going to see the Enosburg, MVU, Milton, and BFA yeah. kids all on one team. Probably um, not a lot of teams. Yeah, bunch right. Of I think teams. I think we're going to have you know one, maybe two divisions with maybe like a north yeah. and a south division, yeah. so it cuts back on travel costs. Huh. We might even see eight-man eight football all throughout the state, but I, I think that... You know, other than those, you know, big programs, your yeah. CVUs, your Essexes, uh, maybe Middlebury traditional is yeah, that Middlebury the sport. Um, yeah. And <laughs> other than that, I mean, we're going to see, you know, the rice, the the rices, and you know, Burlington, South Burlington. I think that might be a team. You know, there's the Linden, St. Johnsbury, all all these yeah. different different schools that are within close proximity to each other that are rivals now yeah. are going to be together within 10, 15 yeah. and years. Certainly to a lesser <clears throat> expense uh, extent. Baseball numbers in Vermont have gone down quite a bit over the last ten years. Yeah. Roy, fact, Roy had and just bear had and just bear. Of course, Nick was on the team. Oh, we have a call. Yeah, call. Good evening. You're the first caller tonight on the best damn sports show in Franklin County. Hello. Hello. Hello, hey. fellas. Hey, Hello. how you doing? Good. Doing fine. Doing fine. They're just enjoying your conversation um, with you know high school football. And, you know, I just hope it survives. I, I hope Me you're too. right, Nick. Um, I see in 10, 15 years, Vermont will be lucky to play football. Yeah. And I hope I am wrong. Yeah, there was a um, a thing on TV, and I meant to catch it, and I didn't. It was to this subject that you're speaking, and it was um, based like Texas is the number one football state in the world, probably, yeah. high school. Oh, yeah. And they were saying how it was dying in Texas. And when you see football dying in Texas, that you know, it's kind of an early shockwave throughout the U.S. Yeah. Um, you know, there's many reasons why I think it's on the decline and stuff. But, you know, uh, uh, you may think I'm crazy, but, you know, like, again, you know, I sound like an old man, but when we were kids, we played football and played and played, but... Everybody lived in the city. Everybody lived near each other. There yep. was big families on every street corner. So yep. you had the bodies within 100 yards to form football teams, where today, um, you know, every people live in Georgia. People live up over the hill in Fairfield. People live down at the bay. You know, like St. Albans has grown and scattered where, you don't have that big gang of kids living next door to each other like we did Nighthawk. Yep. I mean, we had, like I said before, all our gang down the street, Bobby Chevalier, Tommy, Peter Chevalier, yep. they had a 
big gang of football players 200 yards from us. And this you saw, you know, on every block in, in the city. There was, and, um, somebody called a couple weeks ago, too, mentioning, you know, they, uh, I think it was uh, Mr. Manahan called saying when they were kids, they played in back of BFA and, you know, kicked the ball up on the roof or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I guess my point is youth football started when you were about six years old then. I mean, by the time you got to organized football, you know, every kid knew every rule. They uh, they were talented just from backdoor football. And, you know, defending the kids today, they just don't have the numbers next door down the street to get these games together. Yeah. I and mean, two- we grew up playing baseball. We had a dozen of us every day all summer long, yeah. Yeah. as it- well as, you know, a lot of other groups in St. Albans. And again, today, you don't have that luxury. Kids are scattered, and, uh, you know, people live outside the city now. So, you know, and kind of defending today's youth a little bit, they don't have the luxury that we had. Yeah, and and to your point, the student population in the state of Vermont is down 22% in the last dozen years. So, you know, we ain't producing the kids uh, like we used to uh, 60 years ago. No, no, that that's true. It's just kind of sad because, you know, uh, I always felt that sports was, you know, good for the kids that wanted to play. Um, it, it was, uh, you know, it's just fun to talk about. Your, your show was based on sports. And, you know, it was always, you know, fun to play, fun to watch. And uh, you, you hate to see something like that, you know, slowly fizzle away. Yeah. And, you know, the thing about sports, mm-hmm. and it's nothing I'm making up here, and caller, I remember playing on the same softball team with you and the Duke. Is, you know, as we're now into our 60s and look back 35 years, you can't rem- remember a single game that you played in, but you certainly remember the people you played with and the good times that you had with these folks. And uh, that is, is what is missed from people that don't play sports. And I also can tell you. Back in my younger years, I worked for a big company in South Burlington. I was a hiring manager. I, I could talk and I can ask questions and I would, would hire people. And I remember the president of the company told me that one of the important things when you look on the resume, did they play sports? And I remember mm-hmm. going to him like this, mm-hmm. huh, what, what difference to make? The guy was a good quarterback. Mm-hmm. And he, he made the point, which bang, because when you play sports, and Nick, I know you did, you're not going to get along with everyone, but you're going to get that common goal, what you need to do to succeed. Mm-hmm. And that's the way it could be like in a manufacturing plant. You may have 60 people working there. In human nature, you're not going to get along with 60 people, but you develop that sense if you're playing sports. Nick, you're my best buddy. Duke, you really suck, mm-hmm. and I don't like you, but... I need you in order for our team to win tonight. Uh, and, that, and that made all the sense in right. the world. There's so many great byproducts you get from playing sports, aside from the wins and losses. Oh, yeah. yeah mm. You definitely, uh, I think, especially from my time playing hockey at Mississippi, where there's quite a bit of drama going through that program constantly. Um, I think that, you know, it, I learned a lot of lessons on how to deal with difficult people. Yep. Um, and you know how to just coexist and, and go together for the greater good of the of the team and yep. of the program. So it, it definitely teaches you a lot of life lessons. I yep. learned a lot from sports that I wouldn't have otherwise. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, so. and it's also good as as you're young, growing up playing sports is good for your parents too, mingling with other parents at the sport yep. fields, the ballparks, and uh, you know it's just great you know family entertainment. Yep. But uh. You know, you like I said, you hate to see any of that fizzle out. You know, it, it's traditionary and everything. You know, and yeah. uh, you know, football certainly is a a great game. And let's just hope it's taken a little dip in time, and it'll you know have a strong rebound at some point. Now, caller, do you think you think there's any chance, Bobby, for a strong rebound? Have you got some any optimism about that? Well, I don't know, but you know, you. Some things you have to think positive about. Yeah. It, it's, you know, the 
back again. I sound like an old man, and I, I am. But uh, you, have you know, some company. like I've yeah. said on your show before, you know, you're a little league or you're playing football, you get whacked in the head with a ball or your head half torn off. The coach would just say, okay, Bobby, walk it off, walk yeah. it off. You know, but, geez, coach, my arm fell off. We'll you know, and that's the thing. Walk it off, you know. Right. Today, back in the day, is we get a slight concussion. We got our bell rung, take a couple plays off and get back in there. And, of course, we've now discovered <clears throat> what concussions are and the protocol and all that. But, uh, yeah, we were tough guys back then, no question. Hmm. Now, caller, before you leave us, I know you're yeah. a L.A. Ram fan. Uh, I watched, good job by ESPN starting that game at 10.15 at night. I'm sure there are a lot of people here on the East Coast that enjoyed it. Of course, I'm the Nighthawk. I watched it. Oh, yeah. But the L.A. Rams good team. are a very, very good, well-balanced team. And I said it before, aside from quarterbacks, they possess the best offensive player in Todd Gurley. In my humble opinion, the best defensive player overall in Aaron Donald, hmm. defensive tackle, and there's nobody close to him. But this is a well-coached team by a very old coach at the tender age of 32 years of age, Sean McVay. Yeah. And this team is so well-prepared. They destroyed Oakland. Okay, John yeah. Gruden looked so yeah, and bad. The, the amazing thing was is how he kept all the starters out the whole preseason. Gurley did not have any, oh, did not yeah. have a run. The, the quarterback didn't get in. Most of the offensive line didn't play. Mm. And, uh, you know, McVay just said, uh, you know, during the preseason, we're going to look at mostly people that are not going to make the roster. Now, the Rams, that was too late for me to watch, but I pulled the Nighthawk and recorded it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they you could see a little bit of rust in the first half with them, you know, not playing much during the preseason. But, uh, you know, all gears were clicking in the second half. And the, the, the guy I like watching most is Cooper Cup, the pass receiver. Yeah. He, um, this guy is a poor man's Edelman. Yep. I mean, the guy can run north to south. He can run the slot, slants. Uh, he's all over the field, and uh, he seems to be Goff's best target yeah and uh no they are an exciting team you know i've had 15 years or better of um you know watching the rams and the seller so it's uh it was good last year and this year of just watching a competitive team yeah so you know we'll we'll see where they go yeah. from here that may be my adopted team this year of course last year i protested football didn't watch any other than the giants the only game i saw the rams play last year is they played the Giants and only scored 52 points against us mm. on that game. But the Rams are the real deal, and of course they'll be moving into a $3 billion stadium right. in, well, in a couple years. The thing about the Rams is, you look at it, they've got Aaron Donald and Ndamukong Su heading up that defensive that line. That defensive line is sick. It's impossible to run on yes. them. Um, it's very difficult to pass on them. The corners um, They've got great. a keep to leave out there at corner. Tlaib and Marcus Peters. Right, and you look at it, They've got Jared Goff, who's an emerging young young yep. quarterback. With Le'Veon Bell out, Todd Gurley's the best running back in the league. Yep. And they have, um, like he, like uh, the caller said, Cooper Cup, a very good receiver. Yep. And they also have uh, Brandon Cooks from the Patriots. He's their number three wide yep. receiver. Yep. So they are um, they are completely stacked. And Woods, on Robert Woods. Robert Woods. Robert Woods is good yeah. there too. Now um, they're. Is a good receiver. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, just to piggyback on what you said, the, a good point you made earlier, Nighthawk, was the offensive line. Um, the Two, three years ago when we first drafted Goff, I think he was the first or second pick. Yeah. And Wentz also went. People were saying, what are these guys doing? And, boy, what a bust. And Goff played the second half of a losing year that yeah. we had anyways, yeah. the Rams. And he looked. Terrible. With but, Jeff uh, Fisher as the coach. You yeah. know, he'd get the snap and half of the defensive line was on him before he could drop back three right. steps. Kind of like what happens to Eli. Yeah. So when McVay came in here, the first thing he did was shore up the offensive line. Well, what... And now when he passes, you'll see Goff hop back three steps, stand in the pocket, look down the field left, look right, go back left and throw the ball. 
I mean, he has confidence in his line. McVay and company did a very nice job building that offensive line, and Goff went, look, you know, from a first pick bust to a, uh, you know, a Pro Bowl quarterback just because he has time to throw. The best move the Rams had made was their offensive line was horrible. They went out, and the Giants line, as well documented on the show, stinks. But there was a left tackle by the name of Andrew Whitworth, and I believe he played for a dozen years for the Cincinnati Bengals with a free agent. The Giants said, oh, no, 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 he's too old. The Rams signed him, and he has anchored that line. Of course, he's the blindside savior of, of Goff, and he, he's one of the best left tackles of football. This team has just got everything for everybody, and do not be surprised if you see the uh, L.A. Rams in the Super Bowl against New England this year. Hmm. I think it, yeah, I think it's... I didn't enjoy that. They tried to get, um, how do you pronounce his name, Kelly Mack? Khalil, Khalil, Khalil Mack Mac. went to yeah, Chicago. They went yeah. from, uh, he went to the Bears because right. uh, yeah, for he, two picks. Oakland couldn't sign him, but the Rams had a very good offer for him, yeah. which would have been a, another great defensive yeah. piece. But, um, uh, you know, Oakland kind of figured the Rams' draft picks would be a lot lower than Chicago. Right. Yeah. So they yeah. jumped on the Chicago deal where they will, I don't know exactly what the uh, trade offer was or the trade was, but... Uh, you know, I'm sure Oakland will be getting a quicker pick with uh, Chicago rather than the Rams. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's exciting. You know, like like any sport, you know, you want to win the Cup, you want to win the Super Bowl, but just having a competitive team, to me, is uh, 90% of the fun. Right. Yep, that's for sure. So thank you so much, Colin. Uh, I'm used to the Rams by the end of uh, September. You know, it's let's fold it up for another year, you know. Right. So. Yeah, it sounds like you got a good good year coming yeah. up. Thank you, Bobby. Well, I hope so. Okay, good night, guys. Great right. show. Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling. So, so Duke, we've talked about this all preseason. What a a-hole the coach of the Philadelphia Eagles has turned into, Doug mm-hmm. Peterson, about a legitimate question about Carson Wentz. Well, of course, we found out when they named Nick Foles the starting quarterback for week one, mm-hmm. It came out, well, Wentz won't be ready for weeks. Hasn't taken a hit yet. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the saga continues. Are they just being How, wicked conservative with I him? Don't, coming no, off I don't the think injury, so. Not or? at this point. No. Um, no, because a, a win or a loss in September counts just as much as one in December. Right, right. but what's he saying? Not, the Eagles nothing. are not he's a good not, team He's just right not now. talking about uh, Wentz at this point? Well, I'll tell you what. If I was an Eagle fan... Uh, or a scribe for the Philadelphia media, yeah. that's offensive, the way Peterson treated the And I would guess writer. Philadelphia the, media I think it's pretty tough. I would, I would guess he's getting some pretty good grief, isn't he, from now, Philadelphia, Philadelphia media? Philadelphia this week is playing at Tampa, and they're a three-point favorite. Nick Foles, you know, again, will be under center, which I expect to happen for a couple more weeks. Huh. But I'm just, you know, here he is in focus, being the Super Bowl champion yeah. head coach and just the worst attitude. And before this year, he was, he was a pretty easy guy to, de- yeah, to deal just with. Just completely different. Now that he's got wearing the ring, you know, he can, really? he yeah. can be. I, I think it's gone to his head. I don't think that yes. the Eagles are that good of a team. We got another call. Oh, another let's caller. grab a call. Good evening. You're the next caller up tonight on the Best Damn Sports Show in Franklin County. Hello. Yes, sir. You know what I want to talk about? He's going to talk about Ronald Acuna and <laughs> Leonard. I'm, talking, I'm not, not talk about the Atlanta Braves. Right. We're going to talk about the Atlanta Braves. We're right. We'll talk about the Braves. But I, I just want to get, I know you and I kind of this summer, unfortunately, are passing late two ships at night. But Acuna is great. He will win the Rookie of the Year. Uh, but Juan Soto is about yay Soto's close. Soto's a great ball. So Soto's a great ball player. Now, Leonard, well, I'm going to throw this stat. They're very, they're very close. Yes. Well, what? What Acuna has is he can steal bases. Yeah, yeah. And I, and he, I will and tell he probably, you. He probably will hit more home runs. In the yes, and he's a better defender. But I'm going to blow the socks off your feet right now. Hmm. Do you know what player in the National League has the highest on-base percentage, which is an important stat, in the National League? Who is he? And Bryce what, Harper. 
It is Juan Soto, yeah. 19 really? years old, as we sit here, has a .420 on base percentage. Really? He's above the mm -hmm. guy that always leads, Joy Voto from the Cincinnati Reds. Really? This kid, no. 19 years old, no. not sure if he even shaves yet, okay, mm. he's got such great plate discipline. He certainly doesn't go out to a bar and get a drink. Yeah. So, but it makes me makes me think of another youngster from Curacao years ago. That was a guy who I ticketed to hit the Hall of Fame. Hit two home runs and hit two home runs in the first game of the World Series at Yankee Stadium. Yeah, that was Andrew Jones, who got lazy yeah. and fat. In my opinion, in my lifetime, the first Lost half in the of, Hall of Fame. First Lost half of, of his career was the best defensive outfielder. Oh, more have, more than a half ever see. He got fat and lazy. He he threw away a Hall of Fame bust, Leonard. Yeah. Uh, He's still making it. I, I don't think so. But uh, So the Leonard Braves. The Braves, the Braves, I mean, we're not, we haven't won it yet. And, uh, you know, but uh, they're two years ahead of the yeah. th this isn't the worst, right. the first 91 kind of excitement. You can't repeat what happened then. That, that was just so super special. Different type of team. Uh, but I don't know. I know I, Richard doesn't watch them, I'm sure. Mr. Mumley probably doesn't watch them, and we don't either. But they're just like a Little League team. Watch them play. They're just having so much fun. Huh. And they don't even have a bullpen. They don't even have a bullpen that they're getting this stuff. Yeah, the we only don't have time... a closer. We don't have a legit closer, but right. we get, we're getting him back here Friday. Yeah, the only game I watched was the um, the Red Sox come back there a couple of weeks yeah, ago. That, yeah, and we overcame that. A lot of yeah. teams would have folded their tent after that. Right. And they yeah, came Braves back are and they three out of four on the road. Yeah. And of course, the hapless Giants. I, don't tell me the score because it was only on Facebook today. It's the only place you could watch it live. Yeah. I have, I don't know the score. I don't want to know the score, but I may get to watch it on at bat because they archived the game. So I may still get to watch that game, even though it's probably done. Yeah. They started at four oh five. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but anyway, the Phillies got fifteen relievers and five starters right now, and apparently they. I mean, they're not scoring runs, and and their relief, their their bullpen is imploded. Yeah, two and eight over uh, the and, last. And uh, I still, I still maintain the Mets are the team that can fulfill destiny here. But I mean, the Braves, I, I, I would be surprised if they blow it because they're they're too good a hitting team, and their starters are they they got good starters. They really do. It's just their bullpen that's really a little lackadaisical here. Well, Leonard, the, the starters have been great. Be told there is no super team in the National League. Nothing even close. Right. The the that's five right. five teams in the American League are better than any National League team this no, year. Yeah. Braves could easily. Now, the, the Braves series. could be in the World Series yeah, this they year. They really could. Because it's possible. It's conceivable. The yeah. Chicago yeah. Cubs have been, have been no inconsistent. There's no team in Major League Baseball that has scored more runs from the seventh inning on. Right. Really? Yeah. And they've got, I mean, you look at it, more than likely they're going to have that number two seed in the um, in the playoffs. Maybe even the top seed, you know, if they, if they can, you know, keep it going and the Cubs get cold. They, they could be looking at the top seed and, you know, home home field advantage yeah. for yeah. Uh, a lot of well, it, I've, which, I've which is big. The, they got that nice, leads, nice new park. So I've seen the Braves blow leads before in September, so I'm not, I'm not ready to – you know, raise the flag yet, yeah, but I mean, it's been fun to watch, however it turns out. It's been very fun to watch. Yeah, I it's, think they'll uh, be in the playoffs either way, but I think they well, keep up the way. I don't know. That, the wild card is not coming out of the NL East. It's going to come out of the right. NL. Uh, it's going to but come they out do the have, they've got a seven-game lead on the Phillies, and the Phillies are 2-8 and eight over their last 10, so... I, I, I just I think don't... You just gave, I think you just gave away today's score. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry, Leonard. <laughs> Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. You just gave it away. Uh, <laughs> hey, Leonard. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Leonard, I'm glad. you and I yeah. lead a very lonely life, right? There's very few things. Oh, I know. We, I don't feel like I lead a lonely life. Very few things that bother us. But one thing we have in common is we DVR 99% of our games, and that is what right. we look forward to late at night, okay? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Leonard and I have been this way for a quarter of a century. High Hawk has a wife, blah, blah. We don't talk our, our team because we know it's being recorded. Uh, I, yeah, I say, that was Nick, very never make that mistake again. No, I, I guess not. Night he, he, Hawk. He, 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 Leonard, I'll owe you one. Known. Yeah, yeah. We, we're gaining a half a game only means one thing. So I'm glad it was. I'm glad it worked out. So, uh, and, uh, but anyway, uh, and of course, the New York football giants, 
I think in our loss, even I, I, I think uh, I, I, we're a lot better than last year. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, we we talked at length about down. the Giants. I think we'd be down. plus three. I'd take the Giants over down. Yeah, yeah. Dallas is is gone downhill. I think by eleven forty Sunday night, we'll know exactly who the New York Giants are. Yeah, but I was just so impressed with how mature uh, Ob- Ob- uh, Obama. <laughs> Odell, I was so impressed by how Odell comported himself in that game. Yeah, you know yeah. there were no histrionics. I mean, he he just he went about his business. That was it. Yeah, it's amazing. So it must be they got to him when he signed the contract. Yeah, you want the big money, you're gonna you got you got to comport yourself like a professional. Yeah, yeah. They he got, uh, got a ninety million. And the running back is the, the running back. I mean, even though as you say, he got very few yards on a lot of carries. Well, what makes him so special is he can break one anytime. Oh, he's a home run hitter. But yeah. uh, the Giants oh, yeah. line's going to have to play much, much better in the future here. I, oh, you yeah. Know, well, he, you know, that's the thing. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. I don't know if Eli's got enough time behind that line. No, that's everything I said. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I don't know if Eli's got enough time behind that line. But anyway, other than that, uh, not much to talk about. I'm excited to have a team in the pennant race. And uh, so now, um, Mr. Mumley, I'm going to go watch a movie. Well, hey, Leonard, Leonard, before you go, I'm glad you yeah. called. I've got some, I think, some new, you might know this, you and Diane, but I was at the Franklin General Store where they make very good sandwiches, and they have flyers right next to the deli counter, and I happened yeah. to look under one, and I saw Franklin Notables, and this is uh, the, my good friend Brian Reynolds is active with the Franklin Historical Society with some other good folks, and they're going to start, I think this is going to be a series of programs the first of which is Saturday, October 13, and the headline on the flyer is Franklin Notables. You'll never guess who one of those notables is who's going to be talked about. Well, I, 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 there's a well, lot of notables. Think, think Franklin. Think, think your wife. Think Franklin. Who should come to mind? In Franklin, Tim Magnet? How about Wilfred Rainville? Oh, Wilfred. Oh, absolutely. Wilfred yeah. will be one of the folks, so you might take note of that. Saturday, October 13, I think, at the Franklin Town Hall. And they're going to they're going to take note of eight different Franklin people, including Wilford. And I guess someone will get up and and talk about him for a few minutes. I thought you'd be interested have, in that. I have in my house here somewhere. But I, if you'd see my house, you'd understand why I can't find it. Yeah, don't don't <laughs> ever look yeah. inside my house. I have a VHS tape. I interviewed Wilfred a couple years before he died up yeah. in West Enosburg, and I've got him one on one. I got him 15, 20 minutes on the wow. HS. Great interview, and I can't come up with the darn oh, tape. Wow. And I know it's upstairs somewhere. I just can't find it. Wow. When I decide finally to clean the place out, I'll find it. Huh. And uh, I'll cut it. I'll, I'll make sure I get it digitalized, uh, you know, a CD or something. And uh, Love because he was one of my favorites, and obviously yeah. he's my uh, wife's grandfather. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, and we had many chats, he and I. And, uh, yeah, no, Wilfred is. Uh, one of a kind, one of a kind. Uh, yeah. a, a modern day, he, he's a, he was a philosopher. That's what he was. He was, mm-hmm. he was a philosopher. He was a modern day philosopher. And, uh, he uh, he had a very, uh, you know, he, he had many views on many different things. He wasn't afraid to share them. Of course, he served a term or two in the state house. And uh, he, uh, no, no, a very good choice. Very good choice. Well, I'll tell you, you might be interested. Again, October 13th. Is that a Friday night? It's a Saturday night, October 13th. 13th I assume at the, at the Franklin Town Hall, I think. Oh, yeah. I, well, I definitely will try to make that. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't thought, think I'm I thought of you guys. On a Saturday night. So thanks for the reminder on that. Sure. And, and uh, yeah, you know that tape? You, you know that uh, Vermont uh, public television uh, thing on Franklin County they made back in the yeah, I saw 70s, it. you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. I have that on tape here on my TV, on my DVR. Wilford is uh, interviewed on that for a short bit toward the end of it. Yeah. Good good choice. So, thanks, yeah, Leonard. Yeah, for sure. Okay, see you later, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for calling. We'll so, see you. Bye-bye. Nick, uh, we got to talk about we got to talk about Keegan a little bit. Oh, we Mike. will. Uh, just one thing here. Uh, the Canadians finally pulled the trigger on trading their captain, Max Pacioretty. I love how they did this. Did that this. just happen like two hours ago? Uh, uh, no, no, it happened uh, it was, Monday morning uh, about 1 a.m. 1.30 so in TSN, the morning, I didn't hear Mark he Bergevin he got, they finally trades traded him? his captain for draft picks and Thomas Tatar. He could put oh, up they, they, they got 20. a 
They, this Great was player. this is the best trade that he's made ever, but it far from makes up for the okay, trade. Yeah, for that the, was on my Pat Ready, in my opinion, was never a good captain right. for, the, for the Canadians. He was a goal scorer, but he gave you nothing else. If he didn't and put playoffs, a, and he didn't well, of course, if he didn't put a puck in the net, you would no, not right. notice. Right. I'm glad he's huh. gone. Now they picked up uh, a kid who's yeah, probably a very good prospect, Nick Suzuki, yeah. who was the 13th overall pick by Vegas uh, last really? year. Really? This kid. Uh, had 100 points in the OHL, probably wow. scored 50 goals. This kid is a gamer. So the trade was with, with Vegas? With yeah. Vegas. Wow. And they also picked up Thomas Tatar, who was traded to Vegas right. uh, at the deadline, but played with Detroit most of his career. He's 27, so Slovakian. He's oh, a good player. Good scorer, scored yeah. 20 goals yeah. overall last year. He He'll help Montreal for sure. If he can get in the top lines in Montreal, he thinks he can score 30 goals. And we ah, also, that's kind of a it stretch. It is a stretch because yeah. Montreal doesn't score much. Right. And they also picked up a second round pick. Yeah. So I'm glad to see him gone. Same way I was glad to see huh. a guy that had so much God-given talent one of the laziest players I've ever seen, Alex Galchenyuk, oh, yeah. was traded to Phoenix earlier in the summer for mm. Max Domi. Yeah. Now, just to make you feel huh. really like summer's gone, training camp opens up Friday. Yeah. And the Hockey's Canadians' coming. first exhibition game is Monday night. Yeah. So hockey is coming. Yeah. You know where the um, you know where the Bruins, the Bruins and are, are in are, China right, China. Yeah. right now. Wow. I did read an interesting fact though before we get off the Canadians. Since 1991, the Montreal Canadiens, every captain that they have had, they have traded, traded. Yeah. Oh, within like I mean? four or five years, oh, I believe it yep. was, which is kind of surprising to me, and I think it might have a correlation with the fact that they haven't won a Stanley Cup since about that time. 93, right? Yeah, 93. with John yeah. LeClaire. Yeah. So, also, when my dad put the curse on the Canadiens... No, when they that, traded that, John LeClaire to Philadelphia, no, and that right? they haven't won a Stanley Cup since. So I, good, I believe, I'm not superstitious, but I believe in that curse. So <coughs> yeah, if you're wondering funny. why the Canadians haven't won a <coughs> Cup in 25 years, you can thank Greg Mumble. Yeah, and, no, I, can, and I can tell you right now, uh, they have zero chance of making the playoffs this right. year. Yeah. And I, I'm guessing they're in a total rebuild. Yeah, which they, is, which Nobody is, wants to say that right. because they have it's a, a Canadian, uh, so. 21,000... Sure. 237 seats they have to fill. Sure. And they sure. charge a lot of money for those yeah. tickets. Yeah. But it's a complete rebuild. But you're happy. I mean, that's uh, what, what, what else are they going to do? Right. Just mire in mediocrity at best right. forever? And he, his contracts last year, he signed a horrible contract, which right. he's upset. He, last year was like a six-year contract. He only gives four and a half million a year. Right. He, in order to complete this trade, he needed to sign an extension with Vegas. Yep. He signed a four year yeah, really. uh, twenty eight million dollar extension, do the math seven million. He's a, a de year. decent I hear him on radio all the time. Sounds like a de decent guy. Smart guy from New Canaan, Connecticut. Oh, is that right? yeah. Yeah. Went oh, yeah. to University of Michigan for a year or two. No, is that right? yep. So but just didn't decent just, player. just wasn't just... a just wasn't a great like I said, I don't think player. he had the leadership qualities to c carry. The he good, good player, not a good captain, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was yeah, it. He'll still okay. put up 20 huh. goals a year so for you. Duke, so. you're yeah. chomping out of the bit with nine minutes and two, eight minutes ago. Keegan. Keegan Bradley was, was well, out of the picture to, to get in the tournament of players championship. He was 50, which is, for the record, he was 52nd ranked going into the BMW championship, top 30 in East Lake, way and off. This is a guy I literally talked about two weeks ago. For people that don't play golf and don't understand how you can be great one right. day and suck the next Going day. from a 62 to a 78. Exactly. He was stroke two difference. strokes behind, coming off a 62 round, figuring uh, Mo is on his side. Momentum. Yeah. Okay. Then he shoots 16 strokes worse for a 78. Yeah. End of story. Well, seemingly he, he comes back and, and just... Uh, just a great round of golf um, this weekend. And, and he like dropped, battling that with Justin Rhodes, uh, the world's new number one golfer, and a, and a great golfer. Justin Rhodes is number one now? Yeah, ironically, Justin did, loses a playoff, but still got number one. I did not know one. that. Yep. Um, uh, so Justin, or Keegan Bradley's ranked sixth. And the, he's FedEx. ranked sixth going into Eastlake for right. FedEx. So yeah. he's, he's in all four majors. He's from what, Woodstock? He's from, yep. Yeah, I think so. Of Woodstock course, from Hop, Hopkinton Mass High School. Can you tell me how quickly... Why is Hump Hopkinton, Mass? Why why is that known to people who pay attention to big sports events? Can you tell me? Start of the Boston Marathon. Oh, anyway, oh, yeah. but a Vermont native, uh, Hopkinton High School. Yeah, Meredith, uh, Vermont girl. 
Oh, is that right? Because yeah. they've she's got the first kid, and of course, as soon as he won, yeah. he, ended, he tells the wife, and, yeah. and he throws up his son Logan in the yeah. air. And it's easy to, to get on a lot of athletes. This guy is so down to earth that you would kill to have him as your next But again, he had gone away. He had had some tough times. Not you one know, in six years. Of course, won the PGA. He had the amazing comeback last few holes against Jason Duffner, a major champion, but then kind of faded away, I'm sure, was not having good times. You know who we should thank? You know who should, who, who should be on his Christmas card list? Johnny Miller. I tell you, I hear the announcers make a comment like this, and you know what's going to happen. Okay, they go to the playoff. No, Justin Rose just missed winning it on the 18th mm -hmm. at BMW outside Philly. Rain a big problem. They finished it Monday. They were rained out Sunday. Well, you called me and left me a message. Oh, right. Because Sunday night just I recorded we going Sports into the Center, but I didn't want to watch it because mm -hmm. I already seen the five five football highlights. I mm -hmm. only taped it to watch the final yeah. round of the tournament. Yeah. Was not on that night. This minute. is kudos to my ex, my new XM radio, and my new used car. Thank you, Raymond LaRoche. I thought you were going to say great. ex wife. I actually, that's funny. I've talked to the, talked to the ex, ex wife. <laughs> okay. Anyway, but um, what was I flashing? Oh, XM radio, because I'm PGA Tour, Channel 92. So I'm listening to this. Got, God, it's not the best sport on radio, but hey, if I'm driving, mm -hmm. I'll take what I can get. Anyway, Justin Rose just misses his putt on the 18th. Lipped it. I didn't see it. Probably, did you see it? Went right around the cup. Right, and did a 360. Yeah. So they, they replay the 18th, and they're both in similar positions, uh, just off the green, not too far from the hole. Justin and Keegan goes first, uh, came up within about a foot easy. You knew he was going to get an easy par. Justin comes up about five feet short, just not a good nope. um, lag putt, whatever. Johnny Miller's comment, boy, Justin Rose, I think the comment was he's made 45 straight putts from within five feet. Oh, so guess, guess what happens? Kiss of death. Kiss of death. Thank you, Johnny. He misses, and, and you know, there's Keegan yeah. throwing his kid up in the air. But, hey, kudos to Keegan. And, of course, Keegan comes, he was just from Vermont. Of course, his name was Pat Bradley, who, who anybody right. who pays attention one, to golf, one of the all -time great, a great golfers. player on the women's golf tour. Uh, but Keegan comes back every uh, August. Oh, right. And Woodstock, I think, and does Woodstock a fundraiser. And Woodstock does one day. Yeah. Yep, thanks. No, it so sounds just like a, a great guy. Great but he had been, for the record, I mean, you know golf, ups and downs. He had gotten out of the top. He had just fallen totally out of it. So what a what a huge yeah. win. And like I said, he's in all four majors, and he's qualifying for every yeah. tournament next year. And he's like, as you said, number six. I guess for the top five, it's, it's down to the top 30 for the FedEx Championship. Which if you're is in next, the top five and you weekend. win, of course, it's a points. It's not, it, had he been top five, he <clears> missed <throat> by one. If any of the top five people who win East like get get the ten mil win the championship, so he's just out of that. But I guess everybody in there theoretically yeah, has a chance. Right. And even if you come in thirtieth, I got to think you pocket and that's hundred the grand thing. plus. The winner, not this weekend, next weekend is a ten million dollar paycheck, and that's the, the reason behind this uh, silly showdown between Tiger and Phil I hadn't at even Thanksgiving of that. weekend. It was ten million dollars. PGA said, "Hey, wait no. a second. You're taking so the cut glitter it, cut it to away nine? from our big time million, tournament, yeah. so they cut it down to nine. I haven't million. read a thing about Phil. Uh, boy, I think the pay per view. I'm not sure that. I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure that. Yeah. I think that was not a it's good. It's not going to work out no. because I haven't heard a thing about that it, term. Yeah. Nobody. Again, when it gets closer, there'll be talk. But yeah. pay per view. Give yeah. me a break. Yeah, yeah. And of course, yeah. uh, we're, we're and of course, Ryder Ryder Cup. Ryder not Cup far away. Is, is it? Do watch the Ryder Cup. I'm telling you, Nick. It might be worth it. I mean, should just for, I, should just I for watch the it? You should watch it. If you're a sports guy, I mean, this is, this is it's some intense It's match play. Stuff. When you have folks like, a couple minutes, Ian Poulter, who, who, got the, who got the Europeans, you know, stole one from the Americans a few years ago. But this is pretty intense stuff. Yeah, I'll watch the Masters. I'll watch Sunday the Masters every year. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's about it. Sometimes if golf right. is the only you thing. Might, you TV, might give Ryder Cup a try. Oh, yeah, I'll have to. I mean, is, if it's like... It's one of those things where, you know, at this point in the year, Sundays, I mean, I'll be either watching NASCAR or NFL football. Right, I forget so. you. Na yeah, NASCAR gets it. Golf is kind of like, you know, third on, yeah. on, on the list. Yeah. So one kudos, thing, kudos to Keegan. Great one job. thing, though, Nick, that you see in the Ryder mm -hmm. Cup is the behavior of the players is stuff you never see on the regular tour. And sometimes the, fan, the fans can go oh. a little crazy. USA and I'm sure European fans may be That's pretty cool. Kind. Yeah. yeah, and this tournament is outside of Paris, so yeah. that's a five-hour yeah, difference be between yeah. us be and them. So, Friday, Friday through Sunday, a couple so last weekend in September. Obviously, if a guy's got a 9 o'clock tea time, then you better be up at 4 in the morning um, 
to, to watch it. But uh, again, that's the job of your DVR to uh, to tape that. Or your or your, your DVR or my DVR. I, I, before you leave us here on Earth, I've got to get you into Hawk, watching I don't, DVR. I got, I got enough things to do without. But you don't have to watch taping. commercials. You don't have to watch commercials. So Thanks. that's it. Not me. And a great job by not talking about Serena Williams. Yeah, I just appreciate just that. <laughs> Because oh, you would see God. the really bad side of me if I had to do you would. that. And in fairness, there's criticism not just for Serena, the the ref. There are a lot of people who think the ref was was he did got not complete do a good support job. from the International Tennis well, we Federation. Got but so, he got a lot of criticism from yeah. some very good people yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. For she's, the record, she's nuts. She's cuckoo in the head. So for Zach, the Duke, Red, I'm the Nighthawk. Until next week, everyone. Remember, you do not have to be a great athlete to be a good sport. Ciao for now. See ya.